I'd like to call uh, to order the meeting for the that, Committee of the Whole, Tuesday, March 14th uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, it's being held temporary at the temporary location of the town office at 38 King George Street. And we're also in person um, and it's transmitted electronically as well. We appreciate our Subotsa peoples for sharing their lands with us where we live, work and play together in harmony. Uh, are there any introduction of any late items? Aaron. Let's introduce uh, bike trail signage. Can you bring that up on a new business, please? New business. So that will be C, bike trail. What was the other word? Bike trail signage. Signage. Okay. Anything else? Do I have a motion to accept the agenda with the addition? Councillor Sandu? Councillor Frisby. All in favor? Thank you. Minutes, uh, and this is for information only of the previous uh, Committee of the Whole that was held on February 14th, 2023. Is there any business arising out of those that we are dealing with now? Okay. Business arising and unfinished business, uh, Code uh, Council Code of Ethics update. Mr. Fernandez? Yes, uh, basically it's here for council to give me direction. I know now council is cited as an example. And if you want, I can include questions of that in the Code of Ethics, unless you want to stay with what we've got. Well, I noticed at our meeting of the 14th, we asked staff, staff was directed to include financial penalties. Yes. And they're not included in this new one we got no, today. No, this is still the existing one. Still the old one. Yeah. And I did look at North Carson, but there's nothing that indicates a financial penalty on that, but it must be in one of the violence. Yes, because they did do that with one of their people yeah. for some issues. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? Oh. And, and if I may, court of ethics really doesn't you know, deal with that kind of an issue. It should be done separately. A separate bylaw? A separate clause. Because I mean, that's not court of ethics. In this full meeting, I'm not sure if that's non ethical. I was thinking of something different, but uh, Mayor McGonagall, you have your hand up. I will yield to oh. Councillor Wilmot. And I think that um, we uh, or I'd ask staff to also check the legalities of it. Yeah. As well. Thank you. Mayor Veronica. And I think we can implement any uh, financial penalties within the council remuneration bylaw, perhaps, uh, having it reside within the code of ethics and then referred to in the council. Uh, remuneration bylaw would be the legality of that. And we own the code of ethics as council, so it would be us administering it. It would not have staff doing the penalizing. That would be up to this body should something occur that contravenes the code of ethics. So I, I know that it has not been tested in, in the legal system yet, but any indication that I have had from legal advice has suggested that because the ownership resides at this table, that it would be uh, implemented as such. Okay, anything else on that? We'll see it at the next meeting then. Uh, number six, we have delegations and representations. Uh, we have Mr. Day with the Trailblazer Society. As you know, it's uh, 10 minutes and we don't make decisions at this meeting. And you can let us know what you're going to talk about. All right. So thank you very much for having us here tonight. And, and I'm here on behalf of the Trailblazer Society and uh, President Julia Martinusen is away traveling abroad right now. So and with me is uh, Fred Nip, our uh, uh, secretary or treasurer extraordinaire. Keeps the ball rolling. That's the funding we have and helps us with some of the grants we apply for. So I made a bunch of notes on here to speak to. I'll try to, uh, I hope you all had a chance to look at what I sent you. That, that, that's a snapshot of where we are today and where we come from. So uh, this was born about uh, five years ago with a couple rounds of, uh, or one first round of rural debt funding that was uh, endorsed by the council and it was uh, to support that. 
through the community groups with Cowichan. And uh, we spent that money mostly on developing a uh, hiking and cycling tourism action plan. Um, a consultant was hired. It brought, it brought in all kinds of community stakeholders, uh, Mosaic, um, Chamber of Commerce, uh, all the different uh, clubs and agencies around the town met. And that happened for about five or six months until they, they landed on uh, hiking and cycling would be the thing. And then they hired a consultant to do a report. And it showed all the economic economic values to uh, creating a hike, hiking and cycling network. And I'm probably going to say hiking in this I summer some <laughs> time because that, that's a blend of the two words. And we use that as part of our slogan. So, um, so also, uh, we've just about finished all that uh, Round of rounds of funding. We got two rural dividend and some ICT money, and we're just finishing up the last bit of uh, the second round of uh, rural dividend funding. And we're also uh, surviving on memberships and uh, regular gaming grants. I think we're getting around fifteen hundred dollars a year uh, in that neighborhood, and we're trying to get that up. To, um, we're proving ourselves to be a worthy cause, so you know we're then we can wait for us to apply and uh, get that funding. So that helps keep us alive and. And one of the biggest things that we uh, we're up against is it costs us seven thousand dollars a year for insurance because with our land use agreement with Mosaic, um, they do ten million dollars worth of liability and one million dollars worth of forest fire fighting insurance. So um, that's one of our one of our only bills actually. Um, after we bought all our tools, our trailer was supplied with funding from Mid Island Co-op that bought this down here. They they went all in on it and paid for the wrap and everything. So that's a valuable tool for us and all that we can do. Um, and we received a small grant and aid from CBRD back when that existed. So that's, uh, that's what got us going and got us to where we are today. Um, so I already talked about the community consultation. So it isn't something that myself or anybody in this room or anybody else in the community did by themselves. It was, it was you know, the, the result of this was brought forward by people in the community. And um, so, and it was, uh, like I said, Community Futures Cowichan with a little bit of help of uh, Vancouver Island Tourism, which is now 4BI, and uh, Economic Development Couch, and they, they helped them keep things moving along and, and organize and professional them. Because we didn't, we were gonna, if we were gonna take on something like this as a group, we didn't want to be some ad hoc committee that just did, uh, pardon my language, a half-assed job on this, because it's gotta be world, world-class trail. We have to build trails to, uh, to get insurance and to be on Mosaic land to an International Mountain Biking Association standard. So, um, you know, we, we can't be we can't be just a bunch of people out there with picks and shovels like that. like how it all starts. It starts organically that way. But how we have to, if we're going to invite the public. We have to behave um, and operate under those standards. So we had the tourism uh, hiking and cycling action plan, and since that started, uh, the Trailblazers have hosted a couple of events in town. I don't even remember if it's Cross on the Rock, the Cycle Cross, the Lake New Park that was had over 100 uh, people uh, participating in that, as well as a couple hundred. Uh, Spectators and uh, I remember that event, but it was fun. They did the, use the boardwalk as part of it. And the Couch and Crusher, which is a, a gravel mountain biking race, uh, I didn't even know it existed until I became involved with Trailblazers, but it continues to come back here every year. And that also involves about 100 participants and as well as support staff and, and, and uh, hotel rooms and stuff like that. So the hiking and cycling action plan, tourism action plan, was, was really focused around creating shoulder season tourism opportunities because mountain biking isn't a peak summer activity because it's too hot to be doing that. Uh, it's the fire season, all that kind of stuff. We, we, people don't want to be in the woods, it's going to be in the water. So that was thought of at the time that would be a good good thing to build upon to help you know, build the, the tourism season, the shoulder season. Um, so Mosaic, we entered into a two-year agreement and we've just signed the next agreement for another four years. So um, they doubled the length of our agreement for a thousand hectare polygon of land um, that we're building, uh, hand building uh, trails on. We've got about 20 plus kilometers of hand dug and groomed trails out there. And we're also using about 60 kilometers of abandoned old forest service roads as, as connections for all that. So we've got about a, an 80 to 100 kilometer network in, already on the books. And I'm excited to tell you today that uh, we're going to have our grand opening on June 11th. Um, stay tuned for the details. Um, the area that we're gonna we, that we're gonna call this is Fair Service Fund. Um, mountain biking community and cycling community is has sort of a it's a laid back casual casual thing. So you're gonna find a bunch of different names. And if you go on Trail Forks, and I think you have a link to that on that, that you 
you'll see the names on there. And we're, we're trying to involve First Nations names, forest, full forestry names, and uh, community pioneers, and also trail names. It's tradition when a person builds a trail, they get the name. But so we encourage our members to try to name it appropriately. Um, for instance, we had one uh, that was called, uh, what was that trail called, Frank? Right? Lorax. Lorax. And when you look that up, it's uh, Dr. Seuss character that hates uh, and, uh, trees. Right? <laughs> Mosaic brought that up to us, and we we since came up and, and the group came up with uh, sort of bottle which is I did help build it, so I get the name of these right? Um, so part of all this trail building uh, atmosphere was brought about also was spending some of that real event fun on a master trail builder and, and he owns a company that whenever the province needs advice on building trails by Parks and Rec in British Columbia, they call Mark Woods and trail those things and he came out and did our, our master plan for us survey the territory for the master plan of all the trails. So this isn't just, you know, also something that we just go there and willy-nilly do. He gave us the best the best routes to follow and some of it uh, involved old uh, trails that built long ago and we cleared them out and made them more rideable again. And also he came out and did two workshops, a level one and level two trail building workshops where we're, we know how to build these trails and know where not to build trails. And so that they're sustainable. So that the first storm that comes along, we get a few of those. Um, just wash out these trails. So, um, we make every endeavor to, to stick to those guidelines and do what we do. Um, over the past two years, we've posted trail days every second week and, and every second weekend on Saturdays. should also mention that uh, shortly after we signed our first agreement, they added the Christopher Rock Trail to our to our agreement. So uh, that's exciting for the people at Evo. And uh, yeah. So one exciting project that you all, I think you uh, endorsed the letter, I'm not sure, or just maybe the, the administrator wrote a letter as a letter of support for a, a grant to uh, the Pacific Salmon Enhancement Society, I believe, for uh, to redo some bridges on Beaver Creek Trail. Um, I don't know if you all know Beaver Creek very well, but it enters on the other side of the weir, goes through Ted Burns for, or, uh, Nature Preserve, and you, you wonder how a salmon ever gets up there. But they do, and I've seen them up at Fair Service Bridge and, and you know, half a dozen at a time, and they somehow made it to the they can do the thing and they come back down. So um, mm -hmm. with that, it'll become some restoration work on the creek itself, which is quite logged up in some areas. A lot of old forestry uh, culverts are buried and jammed. You just gotta wonder how the fish get up there when they do. I'm hoping that this project will help enhance that and give that more, more opportunities for salmon to spawn up there. Um, so that's basically about it. We want to let you know if you're out there, you're going to see signposts going up um, on the edge of the trails. Um, and we're a voter signage and it'll be here next month. And it's going to mimic some of the, a lot of the signage. It's going to mimic all of the signage at North Couch and they use on Mount Sabalem, um, and Mount uh, Mount and Mount uh, Provost. So it's going to be the same style so that we can keep it sort of uh, regionally uh, recognizable. And except that we'll have our logo and I just want to speak to our logo that we did uh, thought to involve the First Nation to reach out to them and see if they could design it for us. So that's where our logo came from. And we actually paid their designer to do that for us. Um, so also we come with one very small ask tonight. Um, uh, hopefully uh, that we can follow up with staff on this. We, we realize that uh, we need a trail tee off somewhere. And uh, obviously, if uh, if this is something that council or staff thinks is appropriate to, to help advertise these trails once they're open, um, because it is going to be uh, a big draw for the for tourism in the offshore season. So, um, you know, it was suggested that uh, that we might try it on public lands, but we can't. We can't. We know that. We tried the uh, Chamber of Commerce with their signage of Sable Park, but. Uh, the, the dollar amount they want for that yearly is, is out of our realm. We're just a nonprofit society. We can't afford $700 a year for that. So we don't know what our other options we have. Uh, but I did look at the Trans Canada Trail kiosk. Um, I see it, it is looking tired and perhaps in some areas, not all of it, but there is one panel that I think will be suitable and uh, that we could put at least one set one part of our map on there and, and some trail etiquette stuff on there. We, we would hope. Um, Ideally, we would do a standalone, but if this is a route we need to go to be a partner in that. And on that one panel, I just like you to know if you get a chance to look at it. It, it says on one corner, it says uh, a guide to uh, hiking, 
trails in the area. And it's the, it's the old book, but I'm not sure some of you know it. It doesn't exist anymore. Some of those trails have been maintained, but we thought that would be the panel that would be best suited to, to help. Um, you know, and I think we can all admit some of those signages are getting a little tired. So yeah. we'd be happy to help and enter into any kind of conversation we could about you know, helping refresh that, mm -hmm. more relevant to you know, what trail activities are happening in this state. That's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Councilor Ms. Sandu? Um, that was a great um, mental health email. Thank you for all the information. So, a couple things. So, where is this Trans Canada kiosk located? Right okay. across the NW. That one there. The, the terminus, Western Terminus of Trans Canada. Okay, for that one. Okay. The other thing, um, you guys get a gaming grant. Is that the provincial gaming grant or is that Chances Cowerton? It's provincial. Um, because chances Cowichan and Duncan, they do a yearly, it's a percentage that they, they make from like the casino and, and the bingo. And so for nonprofits, it's it's a yearly application and you get a percentage. Each organization gets a percentage. So that would be um, a, a good way to go looking at that. Yeah, so chances Cowichan and Duncan. And... I also like the idea of the um, the exclusive deals with the local businesses with the membership. I thought that was is that all businesses or is it um, like your members on the Not all. Know yeah, yeah. Where you know that was a pilot project to get going on there. Yeah. But we found what we found was we're we're running up against not a brick wall, but we didn't have any trails to market yet, so it's really tough to sell that vision. Yeah. You know, especially in a small town that's being asked every day for. For something, right? So we expect we're going to get some pretty significant sponsorships once we get our trails open. Go after some. Great job, you guys. Anyone else? Mayor McGonagall. Through you, if I may, uh, thank you for the presentation and the update. Uh, always nice to hear what's going on with volunteers in our community. And, and just to be clear, this is not a town entity per se. The Trailblazers do not reside just in Lake Elgin. It's the Western communities that these uh, members come from, I believe, uh, and, and contribute to, to the good work that the society does. On the, um, on the kiosk ask, I, I'm sure you have worked with staff already on the preamble of that. And we do not make decisions, as you know, from your experience at this table. But we would certainly forward that to staff for consideration on your ask. And I would just direct staff to uh, have a look at possibilities of, of uh, panel advertising for the trailblazing, if, if it can be accommodated. Uh, perhaps sending that not only to James, but also to the APC for their consideration. Uh, just direction to staff on that, please. Thank you. Did you have something? I want to say, yes, I worked on the Trans Canada Trail kiosk and we have been wanting to redo some of the signage. So that's, that's definitely something to think about. So thank you for your presentation mm -hmm. and all the good work that you all do in the community. Thank you so much. Let's do this. Yes. I just want to say during the struggle that we're out there working every second Saturday and we see a lot of work that we've done already. And I think they're getting more comfortable. We have sign posts in, no signs on them, but I think people are getting more comfortable there. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our second delegation is Mr. Peters. Gave me 10 minutes. I'd like to point out, Madam <laughs> Chair, uh, before yes. this delegation starts, that both of these gentlemen are former mayors. We're just missing one of our mayors, Mr. Forrest. Where is he tonight? Do you have anything to bring to us? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> allowing me tonight. I am representing the uh, Couch and Lake Community Forest Co op. And that was brought up at one of our meetings that a lot of the members, not a lot of members, have been approached by residents asking why the fountain is not working at the Forest Memorial Park. And it has been a few years. And we have asked, and it's because they can't find any parts for the pump. And I have been uh, delegated by, by the, our, our uh, co-op to uh, ask if we could get um, staff to look into the purchase of a new pump 
and um, you get back to us on it, and we would um, we would be willing to put some funds forward for a new pump because you know it looks pretty bad that people go in there and all there is that big big hole with a big rust bucket in the middle of it. We'd like to get it back functional. Again. And the other second thing is um, through again to to public works. Um, we need to have some some work done there. There is some unruly. Uh, I don't know whether they're holly bushes or what. They're about five foot high on the right on the right hand side where the birch trees are, and it's just, it's just overgrown there. And I just wonder if they could find it in their day to day stuff to go and do some some updating on that for us. Yeah, just thank you to take the to consider. Those two items. Mm -hmm. uh, get back in. Okay, thank you. We'll bring that up again. Yes, uh, there. It's uh, it's a great center of our community. We want to keep it looking nice, and uh, hopefully, we will be able to do. Mr. Sandu, can I just respond to that quickly? Oh, sure. So <clears throat> the, the pump failed uh, last year. Yes, but we have purchased a new one. It took mm -hmm. us several months to get it. Okay. Uh, so, like so my chain everywhere else. Yeah. 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 I'm sitting at the shop, so okay. when our gardeners fire up here, uh, we'll start cleaning things up and it'll be re installed okay. at that table. Okay. Yeah. And the holly bushes, maybe give me a call and we'll have a look. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Well, there's like um, when you're looking, when you're looking towards the library, the salary on the right hand side, there's some birch trees there. And the, the holly bushes are now about this high. And I, I noticed them quite vividly when we put up the Christmas lights. I still think there's a few thorns stuck behind me, and I haven't quite been able to get out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually Oregon great because they get really high. Yeah, and then they have the yellow flowers that everybody's yeah. allergic to. I think that's what it is. Yeah, they do. They prickle you. Yes, I'm sure our staff will look into that when our gardeners are available. Thank you so much. So thank you. Very much. So okay. thank you. Oh, Mr. Fernandez had a word. Just wondered how much money you have. I always oh. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got lost. Thank you. Thank you. You're looking good, Joe. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, there, just a remark to the uh, superintendent. Um, if they can also look at the uh, ground surrounding the um, fountain on the right hand side if you're walking up to it a lot of the ground is shifted the bricks and, and for people with mobility challenges it could be a, a hazard there i think the poor thought does the bricks so i don't yeah, know the ground of it suddenly i noticed it when we went to the a memorial the and it's coming on April, april 28th yeah. again yeah tomorrow or the day of morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was great. Two great delegation. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I forget where I am. Correspondence action items. Um, we have one from the Lake Cowichan School regarding the health fair. Um, I've been doing this one since I got elected. So if anyone else wants to come along, it's really it's really yeah. I think you are, are anyone else. It's it's ten to twelve on that day and we usually do recycling and we take apples and things for the kids and then if there's anything else the kids want to talk about when they're there um ask questions uh, we're there so it, it's it's a really i love doing it and i love meeting the kids so anyone else i already said yes and i think christine has so anyone else will see you there at about 9 30 to set up anything else on that it's good to be part of the school and get to meet the kids i like i enjoy that so we're going down to reports now, finance and administration. Uh, Ms. Skill. Yes, the uh, report is attached. Just keep in mind that the 2022 comparative amounts are not yet finalized. We're going to end is still ongoing. And the uh, 2023 budget numbers are preliminary. Uh, also, a uh, point of note is Lakeview Park Campground opened on March 6th for reservations. Um, the demand wasn't as high as it was last year. 
Uh, we had about 30,000 in the first couple of days last year versus about 20, just over 20,000 this year. But uh, that's very early. So. I've also attached a, a schedule showing the homeowner grant claims. I found the numbers this year to be interesting. Um, uh, there's been a total increase in homeowner grant claims of uh, 95. And when you look at from 2008 to now, there was only 263 uh, additional homeowner claims, and 95 of those were in 2022. So that could be due to more, obviously, is doing more housing, but also maybe less rental housing, more um, homeowner, homeowners in, in town. And um, what was also interesting was of the 95 new, 30% um, were over 65, were, were 70 were 70% were under 65. So that mm -hmm. is helping our numbers because as you can see over the years um, from 2008, where we had 68% under 65 and 32% over, it's now you know 48% of the homeowner grant claims are over 65, whereas 52 are under. So. Um, just some interesting yeah. information. Any questions on um? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, just a couple things. Um, has a grant the grant in aid? So can people start applying now for the 2023 grant in aid? Yeah. Pardon? Grant and aid or homeowner? No, grant and aid for the, the like for community. Okay. So used to be March 1st. March 1st? Let me check. I'm sure. Yeah, they do it by March 1st. Yeah, that's the how it's okay. So they can start in January then? Yeah. yeah. Where does that advertise that? Because I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I look. thought it was all years until the money drives up. The form is on the website. Yeah, yeah. well, we'll look at okay. it. Um, so a couple other things. One was on CLEC, um, looking at the expenses of variable expenses. I said a question like with food supplies and the cost of how food really is increasing, seems like weekly, monthly basis. And I hear this through restaurants. I'm just curious, like, it isn't looked at on a regular basis um, when you're planning your with your groups and whatnot. Like if say if something increased substantially that you normally do, um, is that kind of monitored? Well, it is monitored, but as you know, in the last year that's probably increased at eight to fifteen percent accommodation that. But when we close the rates for the year, yeah, you know, we're you know, we have to make quotations, it's pretty hard to get out of that. Yeah. So we just you know, we have to make sure that our food is appropriate, and sometimes we're sometimes our groups are uh, asking for something that can't be uh, catered for in that particular situation. So we have to be careful. And I was just wondering, like, with the increase, what you're predicting for um, revenue for collect is, um, and compared to last year, what was um, spent on your food supplies, is is it a balance, like, of your increase of um, groups coming in, like, just going up that little bit? It, it looks like it. I mean, you know what? Let's face it, everything is variable because even the guests that are coming, we don't know, and there's lots of changes. And yeah. it may go from 30 to 60 people or go from 60 to 30 in attendance. And that happens, you know, sometimes within a month. Or some groups will just change all of a sudden. That's why last year we had a surplus of seven show of inventory. So we had a, a high inventory at the end of the year of our food products yeah. because there was uh, a situation where some groups can't at the very last minute. And we had already purchased for that. So sometimes they have to pay, they pay a price for part of the deposit, yeah. but then we're high inventory. So we're, we're working on that as well, which is in a way a positive situation. One more question. If that answers that. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the website and um, I know there's uh, there's no budget for advertising. And I was looking, so I went onto the website, the Collect website. And so it's not updated where it says now booking for 2022. On the main page, so I'm just wondering how often. And uh, CAO and I were talking about that actually, and so the, we're going to contact the person that looks after the website for us, and uh, that person is in Ontario, in fact. But most of our bookings, you should know, come by our website and word of mouth. 
And we have a lot more regrets of working with syllables than we can help with. So we, because over the five or six month period where we're very, very busy in our community, we have a uh, request for July and August, September, uh, even October, probably five people on the same dates can't accommodate. So we refer them to somebody else. So in 2022, that will be updated. Thank you. Um, just on that note, so at the moment for, we're projecting a loss as far as like you and the clip combined of around 30,000. Is, is there anything that we can do at this point to lessen that loss and get it closer to zero? Um, as far as like we talk about more, more bookings. More bookings. So what? how would we get those? Because we just said that we, oh. we're maxed out to the potential dates that we want. Is there any ideas on how we can get this closer to zero? We try and do that all the time. Yeah. And we try and do that by getting the numbers up. Yeah. But of course, not to use the whole COVID situation as an excuse, but we are just getting over COVID. So the groups that are coming now, where we started to have groups that were coming in for 50, 70 people, uh, all of a sudden during COVID, we had smaller groups, but we had to maintain those groups just to make sure we had the business. So I think they're building up again. Uh, recently, we had a group that was close to 60. Uh, one of their days was 125. And that was a very last minute thing. <clears throat> and now we're getting more requests, you know, and spin-off effects on there. So higher higher bookings with uh, or more numbers, that's the way we do that. Because then you've got economies of scale. You know. 20 of our break even amount. And that, unfortunately, is sometimes the groups that we have to have here with the off-season agency. You can spring time and they fall. So, so more numbers. Yeah, for me. Um, but we talk about having no advertising budget and only having a period where we are seeing demand for it. Yeah. Could we advertise to try and fill that shoulder season? Like, are people aware of it for shoulder season activity? Well, I think when we solve that problem, and I think that go back to the trailblazer situation where we're talking about, you know, uh, using recycling as a, as a good example and hiking and stuff. When that happens, if this community does get to that shoulder season strength of cycling, that will help be helpful. But except for places like Fino, uh, Whistler, Victoria, you're not going to get too many rural areas that are going to draw big groups in December, January, February, and March. You really aren't. And that is just a reality. Having said that, we do have some big groups that all of a sudden, um, you know, our, our First Nation the customers that are becoming more and more familiar with our center, we seem to be getting, you know, we're, we're attracting a lot of organizations to them that want to use our, our center. Like, for example, in March, we have a big spring break coming up for a whole week. And we have not had that for the last couple of years since the COVID. Okay. So um, the shoulder season is a hard one. I mean, it's not a piece of cake. I mean, you've got places like Cumberland who use uh, skiing and cycling, you know, year round. They've got like a fantastic trail system there, uh, but they also have skiing in you know, Mount Washington. But we don't have that stuff here at this point. And then, so I, I don't know if that's helpful to you, but you, I think you know that already. It's no different than trying to track one major kayaking or tubing in the wintertime. It doesn't happen that often. Well, yeah, the um, so the, the First Nation groups that, that are coming, they're obviously not so seasonally dependent, and that the popularity is probably spreading by word of mouth, I would guess, with the First Nation groups. Well, we've been there for a long time now, the center has, so we've built up relationships with a number of uh, I keep referring to First Nations because they're really good partners with us right now and have been for a long time, but. You know, when there's funding from governments and uh, opportunities for the youth and, and help, you know, those, it's a good organization and it's a perfect fit for our center. You know, our center is rustic, as you well know. So we have to make sure we can accommodate people in a rustic situation. And there's two to a room, always. Again, another situation that most of us are going to conferences, who's going to be sleeping with? You know, I don't want to see the jab, I'd rather go alone, you know? <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there, there's some hurdles to the center, there's no question about it. You have a five star hotel with 
five structure. Yeah, you're going to still create the one business, but it's still tough. And, and I'm in contact with a lot of the organizations, the tourist organizations of Anchorage Island. Off season is tough, and cash flow is tough. Is, is there an opportunity to advertise or reach out to more groups like the First Nations that may be interested in, in renting the place in the shoulder season? Like, are we, are we hitting yeah. as many groups as we can? Okay, I, I, yeah, I'm following your question. Now, the thing is, our website will address that. And we have a lot of contact for our web, from our website. The first thing any one of us do when we're going to be looking for something, doesn't matter whether it's boating or fishing or well, we're going to look at one of these, right? And uh, I think we have, I think we've got pretty good success. It's not a great website. Years ago, I would prefer to have even a better website, but this fits the bill. So I think we are reaching out. And the word of mouth is great. Thing. And, and we've done the SEO on the website. We've got someone looking after that because that's kind of the king. We could reach out with Google Ads and, you know, certain mm -hmm. advertising like that to target things. Well, the website, I'm sorry I'm pressing on this, it's just I'm trying to find a way, yeah. you know, to, to attract more. And I, I I just don't understand why we're not putting more into advertising and, and trying to branch out to get. I have no problem with that. I yeah. think it's a good idea. And yeah. if you give me an advertising budget, you say, well, I would do that. Stay tuned. We might need to come up. Are you I think that's come up many years. Well, Matt, yes, because there was a time when we did have a budget. Thank you for my time. So, but then if you say that you have maybe five groups that all walk the same weekend, have you ever tried to look at an incentive for any of those groups to go to the off season? Oh, all the time. Like I mean, a better incentive yeah. price wise. Yeah, I mean, part, part of my role to get the groups that we have coming, I would say that most of the times when we have a request for somebody, it probably takes 20 contacts. To make sure that happens. First on the website, maybe a phone call, and we go from there. When they want a date, they want a date. Like July and August, there's a fight over those dates. Yeah. But if there's four groups yeah. that can't get in, if they had an incentive no. to go to a different off-season date. No. We've tried a 10% discount, doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. We have spinners and weavers that come in every February. They want February. They don't want July. They don't want August. They want February. It's a, it's an odd thing that people come in. So it depends when they want to come. That's that's their choice. Mayor McDonald, just a comment, if I may, on the homeowners grant. As we move forward into tax season, I think it's important that we advertise again that this is a provincial run entity now and not a town run entity. So as we get closer, we'll put on our website and Facebook pages that the applicant has to approach the province now for the homeowners grant. I think that'll negate some uh, frustrations on, on the homeowners, especially the people that are uh, moving in here as new residents that may not uh, know that from, from other provinces and that. So if we can just stay on top of that, that we are not uh, the purveyors of the homeowner, homeowner grant anymore that the province is running that entity. I, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is that also on our tax notice? Yes, yes I think it is. And I think it is on the website. On the website. Yeah. But of course you're going to hear, I never heard. Oh, and I know, I know, I get so it. So the continuous communication, I think. Is yes, oh, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, thank you. Update, me. yes. Um, just. To staff, I understand that the, the road to the Lakeview Beach is closed right now because of the development and whatnot. And there was some comments on the weekend that there was no kind of notice to anybody that the, the beach road access was closed. Whether people can go down there and park and then walk down, right? Because the gate's locked. So I'm just wondering future developments, things like that, if we could be proactive and Ahead of time, put it out there on our on our website or our social media that this is going to be closed to public. Yes. Most most of that road is private land. Yeah. Not town land. Yes. So it'd be kind of tough for a town to go out and advertise on behalf of the development. So that's the issue. It's the, it's the force. It's Timber West. No, the road going down yes. the beach. It's not Timber West. 
Not locally relevant. Okay. So along with the developer, could we not do a, a oh, yeah, joint? That, that, that's an issue. That we have but it may not be an issue. Then, because that road will be taken over by the town. Yes. Yes. Uh, just on the info center, um, I see that the grant has been reduced from set of 20, it's been reduced to 15. Is that because there could be another grant coming? Or is that we didn't get it as, as, as much? Interesting. That's 15 is all we got. Okay. Because yeah, it's projected at 20. Yeah, we got 5,000 from it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Oh, so there still yeah. could be more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Moving along to the inspection report, building inspectors report. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, or we just want to look at those. Did anybody have a question on either one of those? Mostly for information. That's it. Okay, we'll go down to the Lake College and Fire Department report for January. Once I get it up here. And I see that they have redacted the addresses for some things. So that's what we ask for. Any questions on that? And do I have a motion to accept the 9,842.91 for January? So Councillor Womaka and Councillor Frisbee, all in favor? Okay. If I may, Madam Chair, I think it's important that we continue to lobby for uh, recoup of, of costs for uh, lift assists, MBIs. Our fire department is not a first responder uh, designated fire department, but they do help uh, if there is um, an ambulance, pardon me, a car that's out of the area and they need assistance, they do assist, but they are not a designated first responder department like some of the other volunteer departments. So we'll continue to lobby senior levels of government similar to other small communities that have volunteer fire departments in this um, impact as well with MBIs and, and lift assists and, and medical responses so of the ones that are not first responder departments. So if we can continue to lobby the senior levels of government for some compensation for our taxpayers who put the bill on. Thank you. Thank you, Dabba. Yep. Just through to the mayor, do we do? Have we done that before? Uh, Chair, I can respond. Yes, we have. We have lobbied the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure to no avail. So perhaps in a future uh, conference, we can bring forward another resolution on, on compensation for those costs incurred at the, at the back of the taxpayers. I think this is brought up every year at the ABICC, which we're going to in April, and um, also the UBCM. So it comes up every year as long as I've been around anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're moving down to the municipal hall report. No request report. Pardon? Did you call the question? I don't know. Did I call the yeah. question? I think so. Yeah. The owl will tell. <laughs> municipal hall. And it, well, did you want well, to speak to that, Mr. Fernando? I can indeed. Uh, we will see that there was a number of change orders issued. In recent uh, weeks, and that's because the staff has been involved in making some changes to make the, uh, the front office accommodate their needs. And so that's why you will see a number of uh, work on changes that have come in. And it's basically at the end of it now. Mm -hmm. I was on site on Saturday with the architect and the contractor. And um, I pressed on the, the, them the need to have that place available for the town staff before the end of So they've indicated they, they will allow us to make that portion of the facility that staff basically managed uh, available in the last few weeks. April. Mm -hmm. The council chambers will not be ready. It'll probably be a couple more months after that. Just got, council needs to be aware that. We only have this place till the end of April. So we may negotiate from, you know, from time to time. 
Does that mean we go back to the fire hall for our meeting? You may have to. Okay. Councilor Sandu? So is, if, if we can get this location for a few more months, why move everything over there when it's not fully finished? Like It'll be fully finished for the staff site. After we do. So that's what they're focusing on now? But if not? If not, yeah, we'll have to negotiate with the, with the landlord. Uh, they have they have repeated the move multiple. They have other plans. Well, they've got to finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, I just had a couple of <laughs> questions on the change order. So on the uh, change over 19, there's two numbers um, in the amount of 18,435.84, but it doesn't specifically say um, what. That yeah, is. the details are separate. So I ignore it quite lengthy. So it would be another nine pages. Nine, nine, nine pages? Yeah, they attached to show the breakdown of 56. I'm just roughly, they're up to nine pages. I think it's important though that we, like this 18,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. And I, and it's, it's for me, what it's that hard for me to support this when all I see is two numbers, but nothing with it. So, well, at this stage of the game, we are the end of it. I've also used uh, one of the uh, contractors which has been giving us the system. We've gone through some of them, not all of them. Uh, so far, there's been no change. You know, I, I think at this stage of the game, we need to get that fully finished. Uh, we've got an architect on top of it, and uh, we've had with the other individual verify numbers and that's the no thing. We've made some changes in terms of uh, how the facility could be so basically taken care of in terms of deciding. Just just one more question on the on, on the renovation. So under the budget for 2023, um there it's 1.3 million. That is that what basically do you believe to I'm complete with, it? To complete it? Yeah, that's that's my understanding. So, yeah. so I was looking at so under the capital under the town hall renovation in 2021, we actually spent three hundred fifty-seven thousand one hundred forty-six dollars. In 2022, we spent two million forty-five dollars and twenty-seven cents. And 2023, if it's one point three, then we're looking at four point two. Well, I don't think it's that much. Well, it's looking at it's the, over the three, actuals. It's over, it's over three million bucks. Well, if you add up the actuals for twenty one and twenty two, and then you add on the one point three possibly for twenty twenty three, it would add up to four million two fifty seven one point six. Look at everything going overboard. It's going to be like one million dollars. No, I understand. I understand. I just. Well, well, that's why I asked. Like, is that kind of what is? Well, we're looking at the high end. It's complete. So you're, you, so you're, you looked at that. So was that under the um, advisement of the architect who's overseeing the job on our behalf? No. So then, how was that number come up with? Well, we're looking at what's left. So we have to guess the and this was yeah the 2021 was mostly blue but it was still the it was still the project it was not part of the tender price tender price exactly. is completely separate we went for the roof because it was leaking so we got that mm -hmm. so the roof has nothing to do with the contract the okay, but we're still we're still again the yeah. numbers are still the numbers and are the numbers well of what had been spent yeah but when we are looking at the contract price what three, what three and then and so that's where we deal with what happened before had nothing to do with what's happening now. It was, it, was to, it was done to fix the problem at the time. The roof was part of that contract, though. No. no. Capital contract. No. It wasn't. If I may, the, the roof was done prior to the tender of, of the renovation project. Uh, that was after a significant rainfall and a water escapement yeah. that happened in the council chambers. Uh, 
prior to the tendering of the renovation contract. So it was to mitigate uh, uh, a water escapement. It's not a leak. You have to do water escapement now in your insurance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing was the demolition of the phase had nothing to do with the top. Separate. That was a separate hydro relocation. Hydro relocation was separate. All done. Was separate. Separate. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a question, Mr. Percy? Yeah, so I, I have a different opinion. I don't think, yeah, me and Ian, but I think we're brought into business on a period of this as far as how many change orders are coming down the pipe. Um, just clarification on your board. I have sought guidance from a third party at no cost to review your required changes in the renovated building. This has resulted in additional change orders. So that person has resulted in a different. No, I, I didn't say that. Just made just wrote that. Is that what I said? No, he's been helpful. I'm not yeah. saying. At the bottom. He's, he has yeah. resulted in the staff is resulted in the business. And then the other thing is like, so one thing that, sorry for that, one thing um, that has been brought up, like the architect who's meant to be on top of things and the engineer and the electrical drawings all missed that there was no power running to the front of reception. And this third party was the only one who picked it up. So I can't see how we're getting guidance from the architect who have missed something this glaring. And if we've got what we thought was a large bill of 113,000 of change order 10, and we've had $100,000 in change orders since without any details to the council, I would like, I'd love to see those nine pages that were referred to before. Um, I think that council, I would, I would suggest that council take back um, control of this and bring it back to council as far as approving change orders um, so we can get those details for anyone that is that is interested in it. Because at the moment, if this keeps ballooning it the way it is, I believe it's going to be us that are, us that are fielding the questions on, on why that is. And we we don't really know what's what's being added. Um, I realise that some might feel that that would push this down the road more and delay the project, to which I would suggest if there are change orders coming up with our you know, it need to be done in a timely manner. We could have special um, council meetings with a quorum to to address those. But at the moment, this is spiraling. And uh, to quote one thing, they are juicing the uh, change orders um, as far as what we'll see. So um, I think we'd all agree that if we had a twenty four thousand um, dollar agenda item for spray foam at this council table, would ask a lot more questions than uh, than we have tonight. So I'd like to hear um, discussion on what your thoughts are of moving the, the <coughs> approval process for change orders back to council. Anyone else? If I may just, just respond to that. If, if we look at <coughs> change orders from 14 down, and we look at the ones that are owner requested, so, so staff has been involved in those change orders in accommodating service to the public through to the CAO and the finance director. Is that correct? Uh, so in, in a number of those, uh, we would not have input as to how the operations could be streamlined, for instance, but we could be apprised of, of those change orders that were brought forward uh, by staff at, at that time. I think we've got to tread a fine line between being involved in the change orders and micromanaging. And, and I, I don't suggest that that is your intent, Councillor Frisbee, but I just want to caution that that we, uh, we as council are responsible for policy, bylaws, and, and structure within the organization. Uh, we certainly should be involved in, in, in the discussion, but not the approval, I, I feel. So that's just my opinion, and, and I'm only one voice here, and it's totally up to the body as to how we move forward. Well, I agree with that as well. Um, does everyone else want to speak to that? I certainly wouldn't know how to handle change orders myself, to tell you the truth. I, uh, that's why I was going to say that it's best, in my opinion, to be left with staff because I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect. Architect. architect, I look at this and I it's beyond my scope. 
But if I may, Madam Chair, yeah. I think it is important that we be apprised mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. the yeah. information um, more than numbered change orders, CC, CCN 26. What does that entail within the change order? Mm -hmm. That is an owner's request uh, in that one, um, conditionally for $18,000. There are two change orders in that. What did it entail? I think that's important information that we, uh, moving forward, uh, can absorb as to what the accommodating features of that staff or owner brought uh, change order impact was. So I, I would like to see that as, as a, at least, uh, a preamble to when they come forward. And we're going to be inundated with, with uh, information, but that's our job yeah. is, is to dissect the information that's afforded to us. Um, so if, if we can do that, and, and I would be uh, comfortable in that situation. Okay, you both had your hands up at the same time. I'll take Councillor Sandu. Well, I was just going to say, um, I, I, it's not my job to micromanage this at all, but it just when you look at like an eighteen thousand dollar add on, with you know that's my thing. But you know, going back hindsight a year a, over a year ago, I, I wish we had gone in a different direction on who was overseeing the project on behalf of the town, where we had more of a local person that could be more, you know, um, taking the information and sitting down on a regular basis with council and with staff just to explain to us because at the end of the day the, the public will know what the end cost is and the five of us are the face of explaining this so at the end of the day when this is all done and said and we're opened up and um i, I want a clear um understanding of this cost of this project so we can explain it to the to the community for clarification change orders one to nine were approved by council correct so we were doing this job at one stage i guess to the micromanagement comment i mean it's i, I don't want to become a project manager or micromanage anything i just don't want to be in the dark over what's going on because if a member of the public come up to me and say hey uh change order nine, uh, 19 for eighteen thousand, what was that about and i could say ccn 26 that's what i could say so I am actually going to give this a go. I, I think in my conscience, I have to um, bring this up. I'd like to motion that approval on change orders be brought back to council. Never second. Second, Secondary Sandy. Any further discussion? Uh, well, I, I can just say that basically it means that the project will have to come, come to a full stop. Nothing's going to happen. But if the change order is not signed, the work will take so then until until council meets or that's a special meeting the other thing to remember is if you want to go out and get somebody else to to manage that facility you will have to go out and tend it you can't just do it on a on a whim i just have to say that at this late day i feel that we have to go with what we're doing i know there's little confusions and there's things we don't fully understand but I watch a lot of news shows and see how many things have gone up in price, three times, four times the price. Uh, I think that um, if we do start doing that now, we will, we will stall it all. And we don't want to do that. Or we're never going to get into that. I just, was there anybody else? Councillor Frisbee? Did the architect have to contact a third party to try and chase up a, a change order to get signed? Yeah. It wasn't my understanding. But I, I mean, I, I understand everyone that is saying that it'll come to a dead stop. As I said, there is uh, things that are timely. A special council meeting could be held. But at the moment, to say that this process is working is not, in my opinion. That's all. Right. Just got to add something. I mean, there's a perception that staff is just throwing out way money. That's the last thing we want to do. We are probably tighter than. Council. We know that. I mean, we have we came up with a change order for hundred some odd thousand dollars. Yeah. You approve. Yeah. You know. So I mean, I think this notion that council is a lot tighter than staff, I think it's just not. So I was going to call the question actually. I, I well, I, don't, I need to address that. Okay. I'm, no one's saying that the council is going to. I'm just saying we're in the dark as far as what is being approved. But, so I don't. I don't see. 
like I'm not saying we're going to save money. I'm saying there's not enough stock gaps in place, nor is there enough information given to anybody yeah. to say in the last couple of months we've spent a hundred thousand and I don't know what. And I can I can address that. You guys are not experts on this issue, not at all. Neither are we, but we depend on other people. Yeah. And and we make sure that when we sign something, we we ask the question. Yeah. You know, the last thing we want is, and then look at the water treatment. Mm -hmm. There's a three, six point three million dollar budget, right? And we should be close to eight million by the time we set it yeah, down. So yeah. I mean, where was council then? Yeah. We were here. Okay, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor of oh, this question. Sorry. The Just question was the motion. The motion was to move approval back to council and change orders. So all those in favor and against or not for. So that is the deal. But piggybacking on that, if I may, I think I think it is important that we have the important information. Yes, on, I agree. On the chain of information. Yes. So the one nine page here we can share. Don't make five nine pages. No, it's going to come in send or I'll read it. Okay, that's fine. And Madam Chair, we've been an hour and uh, we could take a five minutes. Can I just follow up just on that, just to finish yeah. off here? Um, so during the um the meeting with the architect, he alluded to at, at the meeting that in the original contract, we were meant to be the tenants of the building throughout the whole process. So what? Sorry? Well, we, we were, were going to stay in the not, building. Not until September. Just, Just till September. He alluded that we may be able to recoup some of that cost at some stage through this process. Has that been delivered at all? Yeah, it's not going to happen. Because it just apparently just speed it up the process and really has it. It has it, yeah. Does everybody want a break right now? I need to. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're gonna take a five minute break, please, for five minutes.
No, I have a friend with a drone, and Gordon took him out in the boat. He might do it for free. You, 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 I'm only kidding, 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 but you, you remember when I had yes. the presentation made to Council? Yes. That the government missed right? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay. 16. But I have to say, our website does track a lot of people. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. You know, I, Just needs updated. Coming yeah. today, someone rents an office space, little yeah. bits of space into people. And they've got a hundred times and that you'll be one from the center. We're a bit too small for them. Yeah. Well, you can't win them all that mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but we try. Yeah. And your other competition is the forestry center. We but did it no for that. There. It's different. We, we send people there. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of websites, the town website still has that song on there. Yeah. Can we get Can off? we please have that ring? I don't. What's from Mr. Caspic with yeah. a sea chain? No, about killing Bill and killing something. No, it's about a uh, husband killing his wife and she killed him. Well, yeah, Joe didn't know. They didn't. Joe didn't know like the, the I meaning know behind the lesson. Yeah, I like the song. Yeah. Yeah. I like the song, but I never listened to the words. It's not appropriate. Well, you'd be in the backyard. Oh, I know. Okay. Live. Okay. Are we ready? Well, back at. I don't even know what time it is anymore. Six oh eight. Um, okay, the next is 63 Cowich and Lake Road on site issues. Mr. Fernandez, did yes. you want to speak? I refer to the legislation that governs that issue. A building that I like to be at 63 Cowich and Lake Road. And I've, I've basically outlined the process here at the end. And uh, just for council's information, when we want to get, uh, get a building remediated, it takes a long time. <laughs> So there's a process we have to follow and it's outlined here for you. Recommendation, right? Yeah. Any questions on that? Do you need direction? We we need a motion for the recommendation. Just a recommendation. I'll move the recommendation to get it on the floor. Okay. Second by Council Tandon. With a follow-up by May. Yes. This is a similar procedure we used on another. Two properties that we were dealing with uh, issues uh, with the involvement of the RCMP health department and any other entities gives you more of a uh, an avenue for remediation than if it was just by law enforcement. So if there is concerns for safety or health or for other matters, then this would be a process that, that has to occur legislatively. I think we have to be um, cognizant that uh, we are dealing with people's property. And in the end, I, I would like the same consideration if I was in this uh, situation. Uh, we all feel that this isn't the only uh, property spoken of, but if we have this recommendation on a number of properties that do come forward on council with bylaw infractions or bylaw complaints, this would be the process that would be followed. In it, it took probably three years to deal with one entity as we were moving through the process, but in the end, uh, it did come to a amicable resolution for both. Okay. Anything else? On that? Like the process? Well, that's the process they would expect. Okay, uh, may I call the vote on that, please? All those in favor? And opposed? And carried. Thank you. <coughs> Parks, Recreation, and Culture proposal for placement of Darshan Singh Sangha plaque at Tapsa Station Museum by the BC Labor Heritage Center. Who speaks to that? This came forward from a delegation at the last um, council meeting, and we do not make decisions through delegations, so it was brought forward for consideration tonight. During that discussion, there was uh, talk of placement within the museum property, that is town property, and um, there was also uh, conversation about accommodating public works to help with that. So I would um, I would like to move that the request for the placement of the plaque 
at the museum be approved. Do I have a second there? Councilor Romaca. Any questions on that? Just oh. a further comment. We were all uh, mesmerized by the history of, of uh, Mr. Singh mm -hmm. and his uh, involvement locally in, in organizing. And I think it's uh, it's a great place to have that within the museum heritage with all the IWA archives. Yes, it would be wonderful. Okay, all those in favor? And I apologize, Mr. Sanger. What did Sorry. you say? Singh was his middle, middle name. Garzan Singh Sanga, yes. Trying to talk and read it same time. I'm sorry. <laughs> you laughed. I was. We could <laughs> just say Darshan and maybe the hat would be easier. All those in favor? I think we did that already. Thank you very much. That's carried. Um, the next one is governance model for the uh, regional recreation. We had some information. Who would like to speak to that? Mr. McGonagall. So this came forward as a result of the regional recreation referendum question uh, that was endorsed in the last election process. Within that process, it was thought that if you contribute, you should also be involved in governance. If that was the case, you would have uh, 16 people on every uh, facility accommodating governance of that. At the last committee of the whole meeting, uh, options were presented on how to move forward in the governance model for regional recreation, uh, taking into consideration thresholds of payment within the regional recreation. Uh, the committee chose option three, which is a 6% financial contribution on the user rates. So regional recreation is based on user uh, of each of the nine facilities. Uh, within that, there would be four sub-regional um, commissions for whatever format they bring forward. Uh, one in the Couch and South Recreation Commission, one in the Couch and Core Recreation Commission, one in the Couch and Lake Recreation, and one in the Couch and North Recreation. So moving forward, staff is going to bring back governance models, whether it be uh, a mixture of public and elected officials within the commission, which is similar to how College and Lake Recreation currently is, or whether it would be all elected officials as it is currently with the College and Community Center. I argued that uh, a mixture gives you better uh, insight as to what the usage should be from a public standpoint, as opposed to operationally through uh, political influence. So we'll see what comes forward in the um, staff, subsequent staff reports on their recommendations, and I'll keep you over. Thank you, Councilor Sandu. Just a couple of questions from Mayor McGonagall. So the data last collected um, for that this report was 217. So they said every five years they're going to do this. So in 2022, did they do a new data? These are, uh, if I may, through uh, you, Madam Chair. These are averages of the two last data collections in 2017, or perhaps it's a year. Don't hold me on the dates. I will confirm with, um, with the manager of uh, recreation facilities. There was two user uh, studies done, and those were amalgamated as an rolling average. So in another five years, another one will be done, and then they will be rolled. The last two will be implemented as the user percentage is moving forward. The median of the last two users yeah. surveys. Yeah. So if, if, if I may continue, if you, if your usage increases within um, those facilities, then your contribution will increase as well. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. Just for information. Just for information. Um, our next is Public Works and Environmental Services Point Ideal Drive Traffic Concerns. I think that's Mr. Sandu. Yeah. Um, so I think we discussed it briefly before. We can, we can maybe put some more signage up and ask the RCMP to patrol it tomorrow. Uh, I, I don't think speed back from there is going to be a good idea. But we're going to get other complaints. Yeah. 
Has anybody ever looked, and I think I mentioned this before, looked into putting um, the side roads, uh, speed limits down to 40 from 50, because we have 50 everywhere, and a lot of people think it's 40. They aren't looking at the signs, I guess. Sure. Yeah, we did get uh, uh, the new legislation of policy change that allows municipalities to use the speed limits within the town mm -hmm. that went to APC, and they said no. And basically, that uh, well, council can over. It could go back because I know Sanich is doing that right now in a lot of their roads. Uh, I think it's turned out. So it's something to think about. It's something we could bring it back to the APC if people think that would be a good idea. Did that come? So the APC turned it down. So, but it didn't come to the No, because it didn't go in. It was quite a while. So they made the decision, but council can override it. So if we don't know about it, how can we? Uh, I think it was referred to to the council first and then they referred it to the yeah. APC. It was before, so it was before my time. No, no, it was happening last year. Last year. Last year. Okay. We've just forgotten. Councillor Ferguson. So, this is an agenda item I put forward. It was just a follow up to our last meeting where we asked for staff to contact MOTI as far as the roundabout situation and then also looking into a parking and traffic, traffic specialist. So, that was kind of what this agenda item was about. Have we further uh, reached out at all? I have talked to Ministry of Transportation not about it. Where he was supposed to come up this week or early next week over a number of things through down crosswalks and a bunch of line pages and that's all wearing out. I've mm -hmm. uh, dealt with it for quite some time. Um, sweeping the main, I, I've discussed it with him, but that's when he's here, I can bring that up. But see you next And then I think we talked about um, getting a specialist in for parking. During the busy summer season, so they could see it, and we reached out to anyone on that. That I have not. Okay. Anything else on that? Oh, okay. Mr. Fernandez, sorry. Council Bushy, are you talking about putting a roundabout at that corner? No, I was just um, talking to MOTI about what we can do about about that. Um, do you think it came up at the last committee of the whole meeting? I think they said there was room to put a no, roundabout no, no, no. when we heard before. It wasn't wide enough. You'd have to think the A and W on it. <laughs> Meredith McGonagall. If I may, through you, I think the intent was to look at options to mitigate yeah. some of the congestion within South Shore and Point Ideal. How we can perhaps alternate traffic to another avenue, whether it be Burn Road one way, or, or what options are available. Mm -hmm. We're not traffic experts, so that's why we thought we would look to a traffic analyst in the busy season because right now there is no congestion but in the summertime when we have cars parked on both sides of point ideal trying to get in and out on the south shore can be problematic with the crosswalk right there and the island in the middle of the road so that was the intent to move forward not a roundabout per se but uh, some sort of congestion mitigation options that could be looked at Yes. Uh, traffic light would be probably That's where it goes. We haven't got one in town yet. I mentioned a lighted crosswalk at one point there because the people sort of they, they just walk across sometimes. So again, that's another option. And we needed one at the post office as well. Um, there's been accidents there uh, not for a while, but yeah. okay, so that's being looked at. So for the next meeting, maybe if somebody Yeah, he's like I said, uh, the ministry uh, Manager for this area is supposed to be here this week. So there's a number of things to look at. I noticed the crosswalk at between Island Savings and Home Hardware is a real mess with holes, so that needs to be. There's a number of. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Just if I may, Manager, piggybacking on that, when when MOTI does come up, perhaps um, you could invite one of us to tag along with just our concerns on, on that congestion. If there's some political influence, sometimes that does help more than staff to staff. That it's not just you looking for those um, initiations, but it is politically driven as well. Council Bonaca. Yeah, just a question to Superintendent that uh, with the new transit bus shelter across from Country Grocer and the crosswalk there, Paulson is kindergarten to grade three. I'm, um, I'm wondering about the, what do you call it, the foliage, uh, the plants that are 
right there where the crosswalk is because with the transit being moved, there may be more traffic going in that area. And I drove by one time and I was a little concerned about crosswalk sits in the middle of a lot of plants. And if you go down here to the other ones by home hardware and throughout town, there's not really any plants there that would obstruct that crosswalk. And I know people say, well, it's a lighted crosswalk and people should push it. But when you're dealing with smaller children, moms with strollers, et cetera, and I was wondering whether it'd be possible to, I, I would call it, I guess, to zero scape that one little island just so that it's more visible to pedestrians. Yeah, we can look at it. We'll let a gardener in her back soon and then go over to room one. And like I said, in, in a lot of the islands, the plants are starting to overgrow. We can always trim it back or at least. Trim back in the spring, like everybody else, right? Anything else? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Fernandez. Yeah, the ministry uh, did recommend at one time at Donnell Road that we only have a right turn. Yes. And guess what? Oh. Council decided not to go with it. So, I mean, we can use the ministry for advice. But I mean, you have to either take their advice or just say, no, we'll you know, take it if you think it's good. I felt that. I felt, well, I felt the right turn was better because I've sat there for ages. No, the right turn would be better for people really? crossing. That's possible. Yeah, and for the big trucks and things in that too. Uh, I don't go over that on that side in the summer. We should revisit that. We can revisit that. We'll put that. We'll put that to public work study. Another traffic yeah. analyst. Okay, well, I think there was a problem with the sidewalk there because it's quite narrow. Well, but the trucks run over the one by me too all the time, so they can't help it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, there was one of the big lights was hit recently. I saw that it yeah. was taken out. So are we looking to replace those or? Yeah, it's covered. Is it covered by? Unfortunately, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that next week. Okay. I'll get back. Uh, okay. We don't want to replace it. No, we didn't. <coughs> Oh, oh, so ICBC. ICBC. Mm -hmm. So just quickly, since I've started, we've had we've had five or six lights hit, Please. and they're about sixteen thousand dollars a piece. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll forget the lights. Okay. Just floating lights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something different. Okay. Thank you for that. Is that it? That was that was a good discussion. Okay, we're moving on to new business. I think I had extra new business here too, but the first one is Otaki delegation. I'll just mention a couple of things and then Mayor McGonagall can as well. They have changed their travel uh, dates to July 6th to 11th. Um, there are still 11 students going and six adults and they're doing really great work. They've got lots of things going on. You can take all your bottles and cans there or they will pick them up for you. Did you have anything to add, Mr. McGonagall? Oh, just the, uh, the movement of the delegation's arrival was it to accommodate elections within uh, Dr. City. Council election was one week and the mayor election was the next. So they would have been busy in that process and they asked if we could move uh, the start date. Uh, going is one day in Tokyo and then Kikoporo and then Aku Otaki for five days within the home state system. On the return trip, uh, they have chosen to do three days in Tokyo um, in July at 40 degrees and 98% humidity. I'm not thinking I'll be doing much. I, I talked to what was her name, Kathleen, the other day, and she said some of them want to take the train too and do all that. So uh, she's quite excited about going with that. She lived there for a year. That's one of the grandmas. So. Um, and then they're coming. Oh, and I did mention to them that they, we are expecting them to be homestays for when the Otaki people come here in September. And they said, should okay. That Pardon? Should that occur? Depending well, on they, the election. Oh, don't tell me to go to Okay, never mind. Sounds good. Thank you very much. The next thing, oh, sorry. A little plug for them. They also have a Paradise Island cheese fundraiser happening. Orders in by April the first, twenty five dollars. I didn't see that on there. They just gave us posters. Businesses posted, so should be okay. on their page. But it's a nice little four variety 
Oh, the Paradise Island Chiefs. Chiefs oh, yeah. right. Chiefs. Oh, that was fun. They're doing well, and they did get some grants. Uh, people have given them money, so they're doing quite well. Good group. It was good to get Noni's group together to do that. Um, so B is Community Engagement Series at Ramada Inn. I don't know if anyone else is going. That's tomorrow. I think I'm going. I've registered for it. It's the priorities for improving the lives of those living in poverty and um, and different other things. It's um, it'll be interesting. So um, I think we yeah I think we have to have a motion to approve that in case we put in any. Well, I might have to stay overnight. I might be so worn out and take out. Yeah, and lunch take out for lunch. There's no lunch provided. I'm just kidding. Not just um, approval. Can someone make the motion to approve for at least one or two of us to go and a seconder? It's just at the Ramada in in Dundas. I and was registered, but I have to work now, so I have to go. So I'll represent Lake Houghton if that works for everybody. It's um, okay. And uh, can we have a vote on that? All in favor? Opposed? And carried. Thank you for public comment. I'm not taking this. It's it's not, it's not early enough. You have to be there. If I can just piggyback on that, I don't know how many people we actually knew tonight with the uh, mayor of Nanaimo yeah. talking about the issues within Nanaimo oh. and uh, the lack of senior levels of government support and, and it being downloaded onto municipal governments. I think we're seeing that major reaction throughout all communities who are trying to deal with uh, severe issues of addiction, mental health, homelessness, and attainable uh, shelter. Um, and, and he was quite adamant that uh, we do not have, as a municipality, the capacity or the funds to accommodate the serious nature of, the, of that uh, entity. We do have the political um, clout to lobby those levels of government, but it's it's been impacted at, over the last 30 years by closures of, of institutions or those that were needing that institutional care and, and to, to think that we would close those and put um, those people in those severe issues into the community with no repercussions i think was foolhardy at the, at the best and uh, silly at the least but um i think there will be more to come from senior levels of government if we can lobby for a national housing strategy for one thing which was uh, implemented in the 70s for um, at least that facet of funding, steady stream of funding for that niche of people who are marginally housed or are not accommodated uh, through shelter wise. That would be one option. I will certainly bring that forward in the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to, on my trip in the end of May. You're going to Toronto. Yes, okay. Yes, and that, that's what they'll be talking about tomorrow, too, as yes. well, all these different things. So um, it's um, Mayor Staples and Mayor Rob, I forget his last name, Douglas, will be uh, and, and starting all those discussions. And Melena, who used to be our manager at Rackham. Um, now we have another one called Bike Trail Signage. Mr. Frisby, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, so um, I was made aware of this today. I've also quite familiar with it. So we have two bike trails coming to town, one from Duncan that comes out by the a and um, The other one comes out from the Kinsale Trestle at Hammond. Hammond. And what the issue is that we're finding with all the maps that are produced is that there's no circle route that's given guidance that actually brings visitors into town from the Kinsale Trestle. So at Hammond, um, there is a sign saying, please yeah. visit yeah. town. Yeah. But there's nothing, um, there's no guidance on how to get back to the trail to Duncan. So at the, the Nelson kiosk, it's telling people to go down Pine. Yeah. So we've got two messages on how, we, how the two should link. Because yeah. the Hammond Trail is actually quite hard to find for someone who doesn't know it's there. Um, so what I was kind of going to put forward was if we can find a way, because at the moment at Hammond, we're telling people to go down Calton Ave and come around. Um, J and V's, and then link up with the with the A and W, which brings uh, cyclists through town at least to the info centre. Because the feedback we're getting is that people are taking Joel Road and Pine in 
cutting across to the other trail and then leaving town straight away. They're not actually getting to the downtown floor. So we're missing a lot of cyclists that are coming through there. So I would, I was just wondering if it would be worthwhile putting up signage or something from Calgon Ave, even have one to turn at the JMVs to link the two mm -hmm. so that then the maps can show that it is a circle route. Because at the moment they join and then we can offset one to Nelson. It's it's complicated. I, I was on with the group that started that and we weren't going to ever go up pine. It was never going to be like that. Yeah. And the reason we put new signage at Hammond Road is because people were coming down there and not going down pine like they're supposed to come to the kiosk and then go through town. So it is complicated. And that first trail, the one, the south trail, it was the first one. There was never a north trail. So it's it it is a lot of them come to my house. They're riding by my house they don't do what the signage says and we put those signs up to help especially at Hammond Road so they would come down there and then they go down the roundabout and through it's it's difficult um I don't know I don't know what signage you'd have to work it out and figure out what to do with public works if anything would work so if I may because at the moment when the tourists get um there's three maps that are given out and it shows that to, to not going to Lake Calgon if you come from the, the yeah, trestle. Well, the problem is they're all privately funded maps. So, Are they? yeah, so I don't know where they're pulling their information from. CDRD but the RD is the map. Yeah, but there was a couple different, and then the, you know, there were some stronger maps, but um, the information getting um, given out at the Duncan Info Centre is to take Joel Road and, and go through. Oh, well, we should fix that. So right. I think even if we come up with a strategy of yeah. this is the way we want to go, I realize it puts it out on the main road. Um, but we need to get that because it's going to become more and more popular. We need to funnel the, the trestle into there because there is a lot of people come from Glenora and trestle yeah, that we need to try and get into. So if they're doing it at Duncan and they're not doing it correctly, maybe we can discuss it with uh, their info center and mention I did, that. I did discuss it today. Yeah, and, yeah. and they said the problem is the signage, people get lost at Lincoln Cameron. Yeah. So they just keep Well, that's why we put the sign up so they wouldn't get lost, but. Well, the sign says go into town, yeah. but it doesn't show a link where to get back on the trail. It just ends, ends up the info center. So there's no instruction. And then the, the, the kiosk is across the street. Okay. It would be obvious, but yeah. at the moment on all maps, it says. It should all be the same. Trail. It should all be the same. So I don't know. I guess I'd, I'd maybe, um, if we can give instruction to staff, to maybe look into how we figure it out. Link those, even if it's a dotted line on the road, if it's not even signage, it's, you know, follow, follow something. There's a small sign, still got some of them, the small ones that you put on a, a, a post that says Trans Canada Trail, but then it's not a Trans Canada Trail on the main road. You can't do that. It's a problem. I've it never, never should have gone up. Center. Pardon? Yeah. It's a good, good point. I've never heard. Like, I don't think they get them. That's yeah. wrong. We had a map at the visitor center that was the correct sign. But, yeah. So I know that I had a real struggle finding that hammered mm -hmm. when I was out for a run. It took me a while to find that hammered entrance because it's not. Not easy to find. Them. Well, we just put that in because people were coming out there. That's the only yeah. reason. Otherwise, they're not supposed to come out there. They're supposed to go down fine. But they, as Linda was saying, that they all came to her house and said, where do we go now? And so that's why we put that sign there. So that's just a secondary exit to go out. They're supposed to go down fine. The sign at fine says to go down fine and then carry on to the kiosk and takes you into town. My problem with that is you're not hitting all the businesses in town when you get there anyway. Um, I think it, when we first started doing it, it was not going to go up high, and then it got changed. Where we were going to, I don't know if you were there, Tim, at the time, um, we were going to put the kiosk in a different place, and that's where they decided to change it all. So it's not, it's difficult, but staff can look at see if there's something else that could be. You could be up at the roundabout on any given day and see people coming through with bikes yeah. and they're on the side of the yeah. road. Looking on so obvious, they never they don't you should not they but they don't go to the yes. kiosk or they don't go and get them out. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Don't forget, part of that trail doesn't belong to uh, just after you leave town, it's under MOTI and BC parks, so it's no man's land until you get to the bridges, I think, and then it becomes a CBRD. It's complicated, yeah. The majority because CBRD looks after most of it, the most of it. it. You have to nag at them a little bit, yeah. Brian Farquhar, and uh, yeah, and, and remind them when there's a uh, blowdown and stuff. Yeah, and so the know. initial signage you looked after the town, or uh, we did it to the end of town and all wherever it was, and there wasn't the northern trail at that time. 
So it was basically you would go to the kiosk, go up high, and go out and leave. But people just don't like they come down boundary by me too. They don't go, they don't wait to go, they just keep riding along going, oh, we'll go down here. It's it's not, I don't know, I don't know why they do it. Our friends ride it all the time and they don't seem to have a problem. But anyway, people, some people do. So if you can think of something to do, that we could change it, maybe make up a new map of some sort. Mayor McGonagall. Well, as it gets more popular with the delegation presentation yeah. that we had and we'll the connectivity <laughs> of, of those trails, you want them to come into town. You yeah. want to support our local businesses. Right. If we're pointing them from um, the Hammond area down Pine, you're not getting that interaction. Yeah. That's right. If we can at least have staff look at what might be afforded, even just bike stamps on the on the road uh, from Hammond yeah. um, yeah. could be a possibility, like the bike lanes within uh, Duncan mm -hmm. that are that are delineated that way. That may be a possibility. Not bike lanes per se, but just no. the just the stamping showing where you go. And that could be accommodated in, in the uh, information that's provided. All the stamped route to the kiosk. But we have to make sure that Duncan and Glenora people are telling them the same thing we are. Yeah. That's no. the problem. So we'll have to coordinate with them at some point. Okay. Good discussion. I think we're just about done. Any notices of motion? Yes, please. Let me find it. Well, you only have one second. Hurry up. One second. <laughs> okay, really quickly. Yeah. Um, if um, council would like to relook at the chamber membership. What do you mean by the chamber of commerce? You mean membership by council? Well, they, uh, my understanding is the town of Lake Cowichan is not a member of the Chamber of Commerce and hasn't been because of a fee of fee for service, I believe, was raised from 10000 to 15000 back when Mr. Ward no, was the mayor. No, I don't think that was because no, we just no. didn't feel that yeah. we were a promotion at the time. And it's, yeah. Because I attended the AGM at the chamber and uh, area F was represented as well as area I and our MP Alistair McGregor was also there. And so I asked whether we were still a member. And I think when we talk about you know, reconciliation and uh, going forward with the Chamber of Commerce that maybe this table might entertain rejoining the chamber, just a thought. Okay, so that will go to the next committee of the whole. Oh, sorry. Has there ever been a council member delegate to the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, there, there was when I was first elected. And what is it? That sometimes, the, uh, yeah, go ahead. Through the liaise process, we had liaises for the fire department, for the Chamber of Commerce, for all other entities. A court case came down on uh, liaisons through the CRD that were representing uh, water uh, utility on Salt Spring Island and, and conflict was brought forward. So the, the ruling was that you cannot be, you can be a member, but not a, a director within, within the organizations that you represent. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, and moving forward, they suggested that you remove yourself from, from that liability. So that was the reason that the um, liaisons were, were set aside for now. Mm -hmm. If it's a, po a possibility of rejoining the, the chamber as a member of the chamber, that can certainly be brought forward for discussion on the pros and cons. So we'll talk about that next. Community at home. Okay. okay, now uh, we have question period. Maximum of three minutes per speaker uh, regarding anything on the agenda. Um, you may phone in at 250-749-6681, extension 108, or email anytime, uh, general at lakedogton.ca. And we will come back in 644, at 644. Sorry. Sorry.
Okay. No emails or phone. No emails or phone calls. Do we have? Uh, we have an in person. Did you have any questions, Mister? No. Uh, thanks to uh, Councillor Frisbee, uh, who approached my concerns about the bike. Uh, I have no questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. We encourage more people to come in person. Do you have any questions? Um, so we have no in camera. So I guess we're looking for adjournment. Councillor Homaka, Councillor Sandu had her finger out. All in favor? Mm -hmm.